How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for checking out another video right here at NextGenMD. My name's Gianluca and I'm a first year medical student right here in Ontario, Canada at McMaster University. And if this is the first time that you're checking out one of my videos here on the channel, it's great to have you, okay? Here at the channel, what I do every single week is that I get a video out about medical school, about how you could get into medical school, trying to help people out, and also just sharing some of my experiences in general, okay? So if you just go ahead, smash that like button, help me out with the YouTube algorithm a little bit, and then let's get started. Now basically, what we're talking about here today is the MCAT test, but more specifically, we're talking about the Next Gen MD study method, or basically what I did in order to get a 517 on my own MCAT test, uh, which was something that I was really proud of. But first of all, before we get into talking about the MCAT test itself and how to study for it, just make sure that you have a very uh, foundational understanding of what the MCAT test is, what's on it, when you're supposed to write it, why we're writing it in the first place. And if you don't know these things, just make sure that you check out my last video because it's going to go ahead and cover all of that information uh, that's preliminary to before you start studying for the MCAT. Now, um, the first thing that you need to know about this plan is that in order to get one of these higher scores, to so target one of the upper scores on the MCAT from 515 all the way up to 520 and beyond, the name of the game here is going to be uh, to basically know everything. You need to know everything that there is on the MCAT test, all of the small details uh, and everything like that because we are going to reduce the chance that we could show up on test day and they're asking us questions that we've never actually seen before. Now in order to learn everything about the actual test and all the information, there's going to be a lot of studying involved here. Uh, and for that reason, I've, I've already gone ahead and done some calculations. What we're looking at here with this plan is between five and 600 hours of studying broken up over three months. It's 90 days and it's six days a week, uh, about eight to nine hours of studying a day. And this is going to be from Monday all the way up to Saturday. And then you're going to go ahead and take that Sunday off. You need these, this break, this one day when we're studying for the MCAT. Now the way that these three months break down is basically after your final test in school for the year, right? Uh, usually tests are, are out by May. After that very last test, you're going to take one week off from, and you're going to do absolutely nothing. You're going to sit down at home, you're going to de-stress, you're going to hang out with your friends and do anything that you want to do. Uh, and then after then, you're going to get right into studying so that you study for three months and then your test day is going to be somewhere around the end of July or the beginning of August. So when we're studying for the MCAT test, there's basically two parts of it, two different foundational steps. The first part is going to be the knowledge review, where you actually learn everything that you need to know uh, about the actual material. And then the second part is going to be taking the practice tests and learning how to do the MCAT efficiently and answering all the questions correctly, uh, because there's little tips and tricks that you're going to learn as you uh, do the practice tests and learn for yourself. So the very first thing that you need to do then is go ahead, I'm going to link it in the description below. There is a document provided by the AAMC that gives you exactly what's going to be on each of the individual sections of the MCAT. Now we talked about this before, there's four sections of the MCAT, but basically the subjects that are going to be tested are going to be biology, organic chemistry, general chemistry, physics, uh, psychology, and sociology. And basically everything else is going to be a derivative of one of these things here. So go ahead and print that uh, that document out, again, linked in the description. But then also, you're going to have to go ahead and print out the formula sheet that I'm also going to link um, so that you know all of these individual formulas and how you apply them, okay? Now, what's going to happen is that as we're learning things from the knowledge uh, review part, once you've done something, you've seen it before, go back to this document that you printed out and cross it out so that you can keep track of what you still need to learn and what you've already learned and are now just working on to review. And on top of printing out these lists, you're also going to go and grab yourself some MCAT study books. Now these vary in price and there's a whole bunch of different companies that offer them, okay? I use the Princeton Review, but I don't get the Swiss, so that don't work for Princeton Review. I thought they were great books, but some people use Kaplan, some people use other companies, and they do well with those too, okay? So always go ahead, uh, look for used copies, look for copies on Amazon that are on sale, and try and find a good deal on these books. As long as they go and they cover all of the different things that are tested on the actual MCAT. Okay. 
Now we've gathered all of our preliminary information and materials that we're going to need. We can move on to the very first month of studying. Now in this first month, we're going to be focusing exclusively on knowledge review. And again, this is month one of three months total. We're only focusing on learning the material at this point. In the very first month, what's going to happen is that you're going to be studying six days a week um, for about eight hours a day. And I'm going to go ahead and put the breakdown of how this works out. Uh, I kind of made a schedule for you on, uh, I'm going to put it on the screen right now. And basically what we're doing is that every single day we are doing one chapter uh, of one subject. We're doing another chapter of a different subject, right? We're not going to do two chapters of chemistry. It's going to be either one chapter of chemistry and then one chapter of biology, for example. And then on top of that, we're doing one hour to about 90 minutes of cars review. And you are going to do this every single day, uh, six days a week for that first month. Okay, so that's one chapter in one thing, one chapter in another thing, and then cars. Cars needs to be done every single day. I've already made a video about this in the past, but basically it's a stubborn subject, okay? It's one of those things that takes the longest to actually um, move your score up from your baseline. And it's gonna be possible, but it's going to need that work and it needs to be done every single day. Now also with the first month, just keep in mind that between Monday and Friday, we're gonna be learning all new material, right? That's two new chapters per day plus cards. But then on the Saturday, what that day is gonna be reserved for is reviewing everything that we just learned in the last week. And that's just so that we don't move on to a brand new week and brand new chapters without first making sure that we understood everything that we just learned in the last week because it's going to be a lot of stuff that you're going to have done brand new for the very first time over the course of one week. Now then, after the very first month of studying, the initial knowledge review, then you're going to move on to the second month. Now, in the second month of studying, the brand new thing that we're going to take on is the incorporation of practice tests into studying. And actually, we're still going to be doing the knowledge review portion at this time as well. The reason being is because normally you wouldn't expect to finish the entire knowledge review section in 30 days of studying. Normally, this, this takes about uh, 45 days if we're following this plan properly to really learn everything for the very first time. And therefore, what you're going to be doing is still following the first plan. I'm gonna have month two up on the screen now, right? We're still gonna be doing our knowledge review, but once a week now, we're also going to be doing our practice tests. Now these practice tests, these are what we call the full length, you'll see F, L on all the internet forums and things like that, are full length practice tests. And these are gonna be the full seven and a half hour replica tests that are very, very similar to the MCAT tests. They have the, the breaks and everything fit in there as well so that it feels like an actual test. Now, when we're talking about the full length practice tests, these are gonna be um, tests that you're gonna to have to buy from other companies. And um, quite honestly, these are gonna be your biggest investments in getting ready for the actual MCAT test itself. The reason being is because the company that actually uh, administers the MCAT test, the AAMC, they also have official practice tests. Now there's five of these in total, and these are gonna be your closest indicator of what the actual test is like. Now, when we're following this plan here, in total, we're gonna schedule in 10 practice tests. And because there's only five AAMC tests, you're gonna to have to go ahead and look into external companies that also sell practice tests. My advice as far as taking practice tests go is that we save the AAMC tests for the final months, okay? And the reason being is because these are gonna be the best predictor of what your score is gonna be on the actual test. Now, for the second month, basically what it looks like is that we do our two chapters a day, we're doing our cars, and then on the day of the full length practice test, this is gonna be all that we do, okay? And that's because it's a seven and a half hour block uh, when everything's said and done, and then you're gonna be exhausted, so you're gonna go home and you're gonna take a, a nap, you're gonna relax and just recuperate for the next day. The day after you do one of these full length practice tests, you need to then take up what you, you learned or what you did on that practice test. You're gonna go through it all and you're gonna see what you got right, what you got wrong. This is gonna be the most important part of the practice test and the process of correcting one of your practice tests should take about three to four hours in total. You're gonna to go over all of your questions one at a time with a fine tooth comb and you're gonna see not only which ones you got right and which ones you got wrong, but why you chose specific answers 
to the questions that you got wrong. What did you think versus what was the actual answer and how could you go about that in the future? So you're gonna go ahead and make a note of the ones that you got wrong so that after your initial three to four hours of reviewing, you can then take your newly generated list of all the, uh, the concepts that you need to review and then in the second half of that day where we're reviewing our test, we're going back in through our books and we're reading over these sections and we're making sure that we understand why we made those, uh, those mistakes and how we could avoid them in the future. And this is gonna be one of the most important parts of this entire study process. So in this second month, we're doing only one practice test, one full length test per week. And then in addition to this, we're gonna finish our initial knowledge review. Now, if we're doing this properly up until this point, we should be done the initial knowledge review uh, at around halfway through the second month. From this point, what we're gonna do is then start a second pass of the knowledge review. And this time, in order to go through the, the knowledge review, you're gonna start skimming back through your textbook. You're gonna go very, very quickly and read through things and highlight things that stand out and things that you didn't really understand the first time. And then you're also gonna go onto uh, the Khan Academy website and watch their videos on, they have a whole series basically on the MCAT test. You're gonna watch their videos at one and a half speed up into two times speed so you could quickly go through and you're going to take down notes as to uh, things that they said that you didn't know before because all of the different resources that you get, they're all going to have little different pieces of information. And diversifying, by diversifying the amount of sources that you're taking all this information from, you're going to reduce the amount of knowledge gaps that you have about the individual subjects. And the Khan Academy, all their videos are free and they're fantastic, so I would highly recommend that. Now you're gonna keep following the month two schedule for uh, basically that entire month. And then afterwards, we're gonna move on to the final step in our preparation, which is month three. Now during month three, you're gonna feel a little bit stressed out because the test is coming up uh, and there's a lot of things to worry about there, but you're also hopefully gonna start feeling very confident about the things um, that, you, that you didn't know before and now that you do know, right? Because hopefully we've been making notes on the things that we've got wrong and we go back and we, we check them and make sure that now we do learn them and we're crossing those out on our list as we go through. Now in our third month, for the first two weeks, we're still going to be doing one practice test per week. Nothing's really going to change compared to month two. However, for that last part of the of month three, we're now going to move on to doing one practice test every three days. And basically the way that this works out, it's about two practice tests per week. We're still going to make sure that we're doing our corrections afterwards. It's going to take mostly the entire day. And then we're going to have uh, the day after that where we're doing our final review now. We're going back one more time, making sure that we understand the minutia and everything about everything. And then once that day is over, you move on to another practice test. And this is going to be because uh, as we go ahead and approach the final test, you want to be as confident with taking the test as possible. And the best way to do that is through repetition in my own experience. Also, all throughout month three, we're still going to be keeping up that CARS practice because this is so important for as we approach the last little bit uh, of studying for the test. Now in your final two weeks of getting ready for the MCAT test, okay, it's very, very important to just make sure that you finish your last practice test three days before the day of your actual test. So in other words, if your final, uh, if your actual test is gonna be on the Saturday, then your final practice test should be on the Wednesday. And the reason this is, is because you're gonna write that final practice test on the Wednesday. On the Thursday, you're gonna go ahead and correct your test uh, your very last one, make sure that everything that you got wrong, you're doing one final pass through to figure out why you got it wrong and how you're not gonna get it wrong on the actual test. And then that Friday, the very last day before the test, okay, you're gonna make sure that you only study for half the day. You're gonna do that just that morning for about three or four hours. You're gonna go through one more time and make sure that you've memorized all the formulas on the formula sheet. You know when to go ahead and use those formulas uh, and then all the little last minute things. But at this point in time, it's all about trusting the preparation that you did. Don't freak out, stay calm, because one of the worst things that you could do for the MCAT test is going into the actual test and being stressed out. I would actually advise that in the second half of that day, of the final day before the MCAT test, you go and you hit the gym, you hit it hard, and then you go to sleep nice and early so that you can wake up nice and early on the actual day of your test. 
Now guys, for those of you that stuck around to this point in the video, there's one more very important thing that I need to tell everyone. The most important part of this entire process in terms of before you start studying is that you need to sit down at your desk at the very beginning, take out a blank sheet of paper and a permanent marker and write down on this sheet of paper the score that you want on your MCAT test. If you want a 515, be realistic with it, write it on the sheet of paper, okay, and just know that it's more than just a number. This represents the amount of studying that you're going to have to do over the next three months in order to go ahead and make your, uh, your, your mission, your goal a reality, right? Uh, and that way, when times get tough, when you've been studying for hours and you haven't been able to go out to parties like you were able to do before, you could actually look back at the score and remember why you're doing this all in the first place, right? Have this in front of you as motivation to keep pushing you. Uh, to follow the study plan, to keep doing those practice tests, and to just to keep giving it your best shot no matter what. So I actually had a super long week this week. We were busy with tests and clin skills and learning uh, our final few units on the cardiac system. Uh, and, and yeah, so, so there's a lot more coming for me this weekend in terms of studying. But there's also more videos coming out next week too. So everyone just stay tuned for the next one. I hope everyone has a great week and uh, just take it easy.